Hello everybody. So the stock that I want to discuss today is Digital Ocean, ticker symbol DOCN. So what is Digital Ocean? Well, they are cloud service for small businesses. And what they, they do, their mission statement is uh, to simplify cloud computing so builders can spend more time creating software that changes the world. So they are a software, they are a cloud service that is for young companies, for small businesses, for people, companies who are just starting out with the cloud. And in fact, when you look at the customer composition, you can see that they, they have thousands and thousands of customers who pay very, very, very little, uh, a little more than 50 bucks, but it's, um, it's uh, most customers pay actually less than $500 a month. So, so, so again, this is, this is a, a pre AWS or pre GCP service. This is a service for really small size businesses, medium sized businesses who are just getting started with cloud computing. And uh, what, what problem does Digital Ocean solve? Why, why is Digital Ocean good? Well, um, because it's got e easy processes, easy systems, it's easy to use. It's got cheap pricing. It's got a lot of support and a lot of community forums that you can use. And it also also has an uncurated set of, of offerings, which is, which is different um, different from large enterprises who, who, who tend to have platforms that are more designed for large teams, bigger companies, etc., etc., etc. Doc N is really, really targeting the small business, the cloud service for small, small businesses. And so they have a little bit of a counter positioning here. Now, they do have an infrastructure that serves a bunch of customers worldwide. And the, this infrastructure costs a lot of money to run, which is why you'll see when I talk about the debt, they have, they have quite a bit of debt, this company. But yet, we, with this um, relatively sparse amount of data centers, only 15 of them, they can serve 190 countries and, and, and about 150,000 customers. So it's nonetheless pretty impressive. And if you look at the revenue composition, you can see that it, it follows the 80-20 the, the rule in that the, the way to read this chart is that the customers right here, the, the builders and the scalers, they are about 20% of the customers, but they represent more than 80% of the revenue. Much of the revenue comes from these builders or, and, and these scalers. And scalers spend more than 500 a month. Builders, so about half the number of customers spend between 50 and 500 a month. Um, and, and, and really, again, small business it's it's nothing compared to what the aws bill for a company like netflix or zoom would be for example right it's all it's all small um small customers small business you can see the average uh revenue per, per user the our poo is is, uh, is uh, in the hundreds of dollars uh, for the bulk for the bulk of a system. I guess I guess scalers is 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 two thousand dollars, but but still it's very very small. And they also have learners. So there's a the learners you can see are, are a tremendous amount. You know four hundred sixty eight thousand learners. The hope of course is that these small business upgrade to become builders and scalers on the dock ocean platform on the digital ocean platform. So that's about it for for the qualitative analysis of the business I think we can now move to the financials which is always what what's um, what's interesting to to put these ideas in numbers and so how does it look in numbers well so they've had 30% and 30% growth in 2021, 2022, and they're seeing a slowdown. A lot of businesses are spending less money right now. And so if you if you take their guidance and uh, and look at what they're predicting from their guidance, they're predicting 23% growth for the full year of 2023 versus 2022. So really, really a mild uh, guidance going down. Definitely don't like to see that too much, but that's the nature of macro. That's how the market is right now. So let's look at some revenue head wins well big tech big tech is the headwind you know all it would take is big tech to tailor an offering that 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 could be targeted towards small businesses uh, all it would take them would be for a company like azure or, or gcp or aws to have enough attention 
to develop a product to small businesses and 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 you know it could be a formidable formidable threat to this business so so i i i i put an orange flag here because even though they have a counter positioning it's it's still a threat it's still a threat and you the concentration itself is also an orange flag because they focus on smbs and smbs tend to be more vulner vulnerable than, than big companies right they're, they're more likely to fail they're just getting started and so that's that's a little bit of concentration but that is a, a headwind or at least a potential risk now off to the big upside you know what is what is the upside well recurring sales so that's a big upside of course you don't have to fight for your sales every every year they're recurring and also i believe they they have low macro sensitivity because cloud in general is is a business imperative regardless of of the cycle and even even though they spend less you can see the, the drop has not been a having right it's been it's been a, it's been quite a drop but not not a having so that's why they, they are sensitive to macro every stock is but i would call them low sensitivity to 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 macro now let's talk about let's talk about the growth runway when i look about the growth runway uh you can see that it's tremendous absolutely tremendous right they estimate their market in 2023 to be 98 billion dollars and of that they will have captured way less than one percent that's 700 million dollars right and 2026 predicted to double total addressable markets predicted to double and so the question is how much of that market will get will they capture uh, if you invest in company you're betting they will capture much more of the size of that market as far as the health of the revenue growth i find it healthy i, I could not find any red flag large acquisitions when i look at this stock so this is good let's talk about n near term bankruptcy and so this, this is where we need to discuss about the debt a little bit is yes so they they are cash flow positive 109 million in cash flow over the last 12 months they have 612 million dollars in cash but this is not without debt they have actually 1.68 billion dollars of debt and why is that well remember remember the data centers that they have that's that's the main reason why they, they have they have major major data centers and, and and these cost money right these are these are physical buildings that you have to fill with servers and so these cost money and so that that is the big reason here why, why you get this this, this large debt and so when when, we, when this debt come due comes due you better hope that their the interest rate environment is not as high as it is today at least at least that would be my, that would be my hope uh, the gross margin um, is pretty good at 62 percent it's it's actually I believe really good for for a cloud service because because you do have some hardware in there and so that's that's pretty pretty darn high um, and again the debt so the debt is a problem but I will penalize them for that debt in the valuation framework when I do my calculation it's not a problem I'm equipped to look at companies with debt not a problem now interestingly and this this likely has to do something with the cash that they have this is one of the few companies um, that I follow in the growth world that is actively getting rid of its cash and buying back stock so they've been buying back stock quite a bit right so they've, they've offset stock-based compensation for fy22 but you will see they will more than offset in 2023 so 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 they're, they're, they're planning to reduce their share count and i guess that is major use of capital that they have so this tells me that this is a company that really believes in itself um if if they are not to cash to keep that cash right keeping the cash on balance sheet would keep you anti-fragile they're seeing an opportunity to buy back the stock and and i and i do believe this stock is not the most highly valued stock it's it's it, to me it's the middle of the road per my calculation okay this is not good here insider ownership is under three percent and the business is not founder led anymore so this is this is not good like like typically i will i, I will give a green flag if i see it like 20 20 percent insider ownership but no founder leading but like that still counts but here no founder and no and no inside i mean essentially no inside or ownership so it is disappointing to see that as far as the productivity of a business you know almost half a million per employee this is, this is a productive business they they can pay their employees um, nice salaries and and it's a it's a productive business so moving on to my my framework which is which is the way i look at stocks and 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 if you follow the channel you know that i use enterprise value over gross profit over revenue growth this is a spin on peter lynch's peg ratio but instead of uh, of earnings because i believe earnings are so easy to manipulate instead of earnings i'm using revenue growth and i'm using gross profit and this is this is how how this um how this works and of course the goal is to try to get it 
under my average for all of my stocks and ideally under 50. And we are just under 50. But as far as valuation goes, this stock to me, compared to all of the hyper growth stocks I follow on the channel, is not overvalued and it's not undervalued. It's, um, it's right in the middle to me, right? It's a little lower right now, but not very much. Um, and if you look at the stock over one year, I mean, frankly, it hasn't done much. Minus 4% over one year. It's It's been quote unquote dead money for one year hasn't moved hasn't moved much i mean this is this is type of stock this type of stock and a lot of growth stocks they are they're due for a spike and so uh, my guess is that this will happen once the pivot is fully in and once we get the first rate cut the first rate cut i believe a lot of stocks will rally a lot of stocks i follow on this channel will rally um this is this is a, a middle of the road stock that would fit well in all of the stocks that i follow on the channel so my commentary my my, my, my commentary to finish this video is that while digital ocean is not super cheap it's not super cheap um it's actually pretty cheap for a cloud computing sector. If you do were to compare this valuation to say Amazon and Amazon's valuation, I believe is mostly for a cloud computing sector. It's actually pretty pretty cheap. If you if you want to get into cloud cloud computing, that's one of the cheapest ways to do it. Um, and right now, I'm not interested in, in in this stock or at least in buying this stock right now. Um, I could be interested if growth was much higher. However, because there is a, a minus a sub a sub thirty percent, so revenue growth is below thirty percent, um, a and then over a is there's high debt, b there's no founder or leader, and c there's big tech as a competitor. These kind of four things and really there's three things aside from the growth rate they make me shy away a little bit from from the stock although you know if you if you if you could have bought it i guess, I guess in january of 2023 it could, it, it could have been a little better but um but yeah that's the reason why i'm shying away but it's not a bad stock in any way uh in fact this stock i believe could do very well because of the heavy buyback of shares they're buying back their shares if you look at it like that you know that's a, the way a lot of value investors think if you buy back some shares the growth the top line growth may not be as much but you own more of the stock because there's fewer shares so that makes up for the lack of top of, of top line growth um so anyways and the, co the cost competitive positioning on this company may also be appealing so this is a stock that could be very well um i am not in it but uh, nonetheless I, I i am fairly positive on, the, on, on this company based on this analysis and uh, this was not investment advice, of course. This is just entertainment. I appreciate all of your likes, all of your follows, uh, all of your subscri subscriptions to my channel. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.